Hi, and welcome to the Unreal Engine News and Community Spotlight. So last week was a really big week for Unreal Engine. We had a lot of great news coming out of GDC 2018. Uh, we announced uh, Paragon assets. We released over $12 million worth of character assets and environment packs. They're all available for free on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, so please go take advantage of those and make awesome projects with them. We want you to check them out, see all the different kinds of animations, textures, materials, and I other items involved in them, and take them apart, learn from them, and play with them. Have fun with that. Uh, we also announced that we are support. We have support in Engine for the Magic Leap uh, SDK or their Magic Leap One. Lots of really cool stuff there going in the virtual world and uh, reality space there. So go take a look. Um, and we also had our keynote on Wednesday. We had the State of Unreal. We worked with ILM, XLab, and Nvidia on a beautiful real-time ray tracing demo called Reflections. We announced a record and replay system that will be available in Fortnite, but you will also be able to implement it yourself via the engine soon. Uh, and we also had a really, really incredible work done with Three Lateral. We had a siren, or a woman named Siren, a digital human, along with Andy Circus. Just some fantastic demos. If you didn't get a chance to see them, they're all available on our website. So if you go to unrealengine.com slash GDC2018, all of those things are available there. We've also uploaded all of our tech talks and learning theater talks that were done uh, from Yerba Buena at our keynote and on the theater or the show floor. So lots of really great information there. Definitely encourage you all to take a look at that. And we had a really wonderful time at our booth. We had over 25 different developers from all over the world hanging out with us. And it was just incredible getting to see all that. We hope you had a chance to stop by. If not, definitely be sure to check us next time. So on to our weekly karma earners. These folks are jumping in and helping their fellow community manager or community members. So we give a shout out to Nebula Games Inc., Thompson N13, Roughhouse Games, Shadow River, Vlink Z3, Deathray, Raidfire.net, Static Void, LOL, Connie Ponchi, and Mia Views. Thank you all. You all are crushing it. So our first community spotlight for this week is a coffee bar demo by Warner V. They've set up this beautiful scene. They've done a great job setting up. It looks really gorgeous. Um, just a you know typical architectural visualization but they've done a really wonderful job and we always love seeing the different kinds of things uh, our community members are making you should keep up the great work our second spotlight uh, project of the week is actually a brawler that has been created with the paragon assets so Alden Fillion created this in his <laughs> spare time, and it looks really sweet. We're all passing around the office and would all totally go play this game. <laughs> so this is just an example of what you can do if you grab those marketplace assets, run around, give them a, you know, take them for a test drive and see what you're able to prototype really quickly. Um, I mean, they've only been out a week and a half and he's put something together like this, so it's really, really cool to see what um, y'all are able to do and so great work Alden we really love it and our third and final spotlight for the week is a streamer or a streamer called Mike named Michael Goka uh, he's been working on swords and magic and stuff we just really love how much he's reaching out and he's supporting his community um, he jumps in streams and he's always really great he's actually relatively new to development, but he's sharing that experience with other developers, always happy to jump in, help them with questions if he's able to answer, and he's also working on this fun uh, Swords in Magic and Stuff game, <laughs> which is a casual multiplayer video game, and it's you're running around with Swords and Magic, you're adventuring with your friends in this cute but perilous world full of action and adventure. So your role is defined by the items you carry and the way you would like to play. So great job! Keep up the awesome work. And that's it for our news and community spotlight.
Hey all, welcome to the Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host, Amanda Bott, and with me I have Tim Slager, our newest community manager, and Jay Hosfeld, who is one of our lead animators. Hello. <laughs> the energy Hello. here is real, guys. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're really excited. We're going to be diving in with uh, Jay to talk about how to get the Paragon assets up and running as far as their animation blueprints. Um, we'll walk through Shinbi, right? Yeah, we're going to start off with Shinbi because that's we gave you guys a basic animation blueprint with her, so we're going to use that as a starting point. And then diving a little in with Crunch and actually walking yes. through the steps? Yeah, uh, I'm going to basically walk you guys through how to get Shinbi stuff over to Crunch as quickly as possible. And so even if you're not interested in animation, I can show you how to get that set up quickly. And if you're really interested in the nitty and gritty of how everything works, I'm going to cover that once I do that transfer. Cool. And we'll do that on Crunch. Awesome. So before we dive in, we want to talk to Tim a little bit. Oh, so you guys are going to be seeing more of him. Um, we're super excited to have you join us. Well, now you come you. from Six Foot. I do. And you, what, what projects were you working on? So at Six Foot, I was working on, I started working on Grey Goo, which was a real-time strategy. Uh, we moved over to working on a project called Rhyme, which is a puzzle adventure game. Mm -hmm. uh, once we kind of closed out the puzzle adventure game, we start, I, was, I was supporting the Dreadnought team. Uh, and then uh, he came here, and it's uh, amazing. Do we know is social media manager? So at, at Six Foot, I, I was filling a couple of roles. I was the community manager for uh, for Grey Goo and for Rhyme, and then I was handling all the social media for Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was just a, it was a wide breadth of experience and, and things to learn. Um, very different games too, so it was very much right. like a like I have to put on my emotional hat and then I have to put on my, my combat hat and <laughs> so it was uh, it was fun and, and you know engaging with people on on two s different projects it's it's such a unique opportunity to talk about uh, you know an emotional experience mm -hmm. and then like get aggressive and like hey I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your ships up in, in <laughs> combat and then space and uh, and both those projects were in Unreal and it was just it was a great opportunity to work on um, and you know it was it was just a lot of fun. Uh, getting to, we did a lot of cool things. Like we did a, a Lindsey Sterling music video for Rhyme. Oh, nice! Um, we did a lot of just a lot of cool engagement things, and I think that a lot of that's kind of what I want to bring here and, and start carrying over to our development community. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Like the, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, swords and magic and stuff. I, I hang out in that chat with the Twitch guys all the time, and they're just they're just super awesome people, and it's it's such a fun opportunity to watch people work in the engine and and see what they're developing. And so it's it's just it's been great so far, and I think this is. This is day 14, 21 or something. Yeah, so, so poor Tim. He started a week before we all left for GDC. I was here for two days before flying to Chicago for train jam. <laughs> and so I was like... Six hours on a train? <laughs> something like that. Uh, which was also an incredible experience if you've never done train jam. You're just on a train with like 340 other devs and they're all jamming and then distracted by mountain scenery. And it's three, three days? Two days. Two days? You, get, uh, you leave Thursday and get okay. there Saturday. Wow. Um, but yeah, so he was here. We're here with him a couple days and we're like, all right, well, we're all going to go. Please hold down the fort and yeah, <laughs> make sure. Uh, it was funny. The, the, the user count of the office was dwindling after Wednesday because <laughs> then the rest of the people on, on Friday, everyone was gone. Yeah. So it was kind of, uh, it was that uh, Ricky Bobby moment where I, I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, but everything was great. It yeah. was, um, and everybody here has just been so awesome. It's such a great experience to to be a part of this. So, yeah, no, we're we're super proud to have you. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of Tim probably on the streams with us. You'll see him very active on social in the forums and diving in Discord. So if you have any questions for Tim or us, hit we, us up, yeah, and we're happy to chat. Yeah. But That's now we have Tim. All but now right. it's all about Jay. All, about all right. <laughs> Are we going? Are we doing? Are we, are we doing the animation part? This is about, <laughs> right. But we need you to be animated too. <laughs> oh, I get to do both. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, as you guys know, we released a ton of Paragon assets, and initially we released all the animations, and we realized that animations by themselves are a little bit meaningless. Uh, so we delivered Shinbi with the animation blueprint, and we based that off of our third-person project, uh, which is a pretty simple animation setup, and we added a couple things to that just so you guys can get started. Um, so today what I'm going to do is show you how to take what we did with Shinbi and just map it to any of the other characters we've released so far. And then I'll dig in and start talking about the concepts. The goal today is I really want to give an introductory to how our animation systems work with these characters. 
So if you're a pro UE4 animation power user, stick around. There's still maybe a couple things I could show you, but um, this is definitely going to be entry. We want to bring a lot more people into this and show them how to work with these assets. And as time goes on, we'll do more Twitch streams and get more in depth uh, with you guys' feedback. So right now, I'm going to show you guys, if you have not opened up Shinbi's animation blueprint, I'm going to show you what she comes with. So right now, she comes with essentially a level start, a level start animation. Uh, we have her doing a run forward locomotion. She's not strafing like we had in Paragon. She runs to the direction that her capsule is moving. And we have her do a jump. Uh, when you turn, with the mouse, she will lean into her runs, which that's something we added that the third person tutorial doesn't have. And she has start and stops. And then I also added a three hit combo. And this all comes with the asset downloaded from the marketplace? This is the asset downloaded marketplace. This is the functionality she currently has. Um, if you look at our animations, let me run through our animation directory real fast you'll see that we actually have a lot more animations uh, than we're using today. The Paragon animation system, a lot of it was specific code to the Paragon build. And our goal is to get you guys that into the, the public version of Unreal. That's going to take several months. So we're going to go ahead and keep all these animations as is. Uh, we're not going to modify them too much to work with this current animation blueprint because in the future, we're going to do a new setup that uses everything we used in Paragon it has a lot of systems like um, speed warping, um, let's see, uh, distance matching, slope warping, all these systems we put in place to keep the feet from sliding and give the animation a, just a high level of fidelity. Uh, so the goal today is to use what we have, set it up. Um, this should be really good to learn for people who have like maybe a low amount of assets, you don't have a big animation team. The s uh, setup we have on Shinbi uses a minimal amount of animation. So, so let's start off. I'm just going to show the quick and easy way to get her animation blueprint onto a character like Crunch. So let's go back up. So the three things you need to copy this over to another hero is the animation test map, the character animation blueprint, and the character blueprint. So these three things. Um, Right now, I'm going to start off by just retargeting her animation blueprint over to Crunch. So what you do is you go over to the retarget and a blueprint. We're going to duplicate and a blueprint and retarget. So you'll get the screen here. And we're not going to retarget any new animations. It's only the animation blueprint. So we're not concerned about the uh, compatible skeleton. So I'm going to turn that off. And so now you can see I have cr the Crunch skeleton in my scene. Oh, and be sure, you will definitely need Shinbi and Crunch in the same project. So before you get started, you need to go ahead and add Shinbi to your Crunch project or migrate her from another project. OK, so here we have the two skeletons. What we want to do is we're not going to create new animations. We're actually going to use Crunch's animations in her blueprint that's being retargeted. So I'm going to say, allow remapping to existing assets. And then right here, I am for the replace with. I'm going to go ahead and replace Shinbi with Crunch. I'm going to change the directory. So the animation blueprint will go over into Crunch's animation folder. So here we go. Crunch. OK, so now when I hit retarget, I'm going to get this screen. And what this is asking me is, all right, I have Shinbi's animation over here that's call, called Jump Recovery Additive. And I assume you want to go ahead and use an animation for Crunch that you already have with the same name. Now, you can go in and search through his animations and find the right one. But we have this really cool feature where we can just hit autofill using best guess. It's going to take a second. And that auto populated this list with, it tried to find the closest animation name um, to, to match. And some of these heroes have slightly different naming conventions because over a period of four years, we kind of honed in on a better naming convention. Uh, but let's go through these real fast and make sure they're good. So we have Jump Recovery Additive. Jump Land looks good. Uh, if you look here, Idle, for whatever reason, it chose a cast animation. We do not need that. We need an Idle. 
So I'll type idle in the search, and let's do uh, let's do idle combat. That sounds good. And on the montage section, you can leave this blank. And let's see. The rest of these are looking fine. Jog uphill, jog downhill. We have a bunch of idle aim offsets. And then we have level start down here. This is the actual animation that's being used in the level start montage up here. So this looks good. But let's say I made a mistake. It's OK. We could always refill back in the, the uh, animation blueprint. So now if I open up Crunch's animation blueprint, we have all the same logic going on. And I'll, I'll cover this stuff once I get the, uh, this stuff working. But right now I'm trying to do the really fast and easy uh, transfer over. So here we have his animation blueprint. So we're set up there. So now we have the, we want to load him in the map where we had Shinbi earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and move these two other assets. I'm going to go ahead and move them over to the crunch directory. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this, just because I know this is going to be Crunch's it's thing now. It's hard to see, isn't it? Yeah. Luckily, I got LASIK a few nice. years ago, so I could, I could see. You have um, laser eyes. Yes. All right, so I'm going to open up this, this character blueprint. And this is where it, I can see what mesh and um, animation blueprint I need to use. Right now, it's pointing to Shinbi. So let's replace Shinbi with Crunch. And let's do something cool. Let's do Crunch Military. I don't know if you guys have seen uh -oh. that skin. It's going to gonna take a second. World first. Actually, you know what I should have done? I should have just kept it simple, gone with Crunch, because it's probably compiling shaders right now. That's what I get for being fancy. Well, in the meantime, just for clarity, yeah. all of these assets can only be used in 419, correct? Yes, this is absolutely 419 and any updates we have since, since this will not work in 4.18. Okay. So if you guys do want to use these assets, just make sure you get updated to the latest. Yes, make sure you do get the latest. Now let's see, while this is thinking, do we have any other questions? I'll, I'll answer uh, right we now. We've got a couple. All right. Um, so they're actually wondering if we're going to add more to Shinbi than what they've already been given with the blueprints? For example, blending the four different cardinal <coughs> direction uh, spaces together yes. or things like that? That is a good question. So when we got Shinbi's animation blueprint out, we really wanted to just get you something really easy to understand and simple. And over time, we are going to add more, at least to one of these. I feel like um, what I want to do is work with you, the community, and start building up something more complex. On the other hand, we definitely have all, like all the new animation systems we have coming. Uh, so we, we have to keep a lot of things ready for that to come. And once, that, once we get the new features from Paragon, we'll have far more complicated animation systems to show you guys. Um, right. Somebody else asked just a real quick question. Mm -hmm. How hard do you think it'll be to translate this into a top-down project? I mean, that is... That's, Honestly, a matter of where you want to put your camera, really. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's more of a gameplay type thing, but these sure. animations will work with the top-down view. All right, so we finally got Crunch up and running. I'm going to go ahead and use his base uh, skin right now because we don't have time for the materials to compile. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and point him to his animation blueprint. So let me move this off the screen real fast. Animation blueprint, let's point it here. I'm going to go ahead and save his character blueprint. Now, let's all cross our fingers. This <laughs> test map should now have, uh, I'm going to say don't save right now. Risky business. That is risky. Let's see. <laughs> we might need to go to another question. Okay. Well, let's yeah, let's do another time. question. It's, uh, um, this, this computer's thinking a little bit. But we should see Crunch pop up here in just a second. Let's see. Do you know if um, 
there any plans to release the Maya control rigs? So along with the Paragon characters? So um, there is not a plan to release the Maya control rigs. Mm -hmm. However, the art rig tool that we use, it's a Maya tool that's free to the public. You can find it on our marketplace, I believe, or GitHub. I think we have it on both. Yeah. And there are ways to take one of our skeletal meshes out of the editor mm -hmm. and, and uh, go ahead and play it. All right, here we go. All right, we got it running. OK. So let me go to full screen. So as you can see here, we have Crunch. And he can run. And there's a few things you're going to see here. When he jumps, the, the jump feels pretty strange. When he turns towards camera, he jitters. That's because he's playing a blend space that is switching between negative 180 and 180. We're going to fix that as well. And if I hit the left mouse button, he's not punching. So I'm going to walk through how to fix those real fast. Uh, but we have him in the game. Also, he is using Shinbi's camera right now. And I'll show you how to pull the camera back. So are these kinds of things, like the punch not working, is that going to be different to each character? Or is it consistently no, the, like the punch is going to be some consistent. Board? That's a good question. This is going to be a consistent problem you're going to see across the board. Basically, we did copy over the, the blueprint. But there's a few things, like I said, we set up these assets to work with our Paragon animation system. And there's a few changes that you guys just need to make. And these are common across the board. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and open up his animation blueprint. And I'm going to fix that jump. That's one of the easiest things we'll fix here. Mm -hmm. So here's his blueprint. And I'll get into this later, but these are his uh, state machines. I'm going to open up the state machine that has his jump land in it. And I'm opening up his jump land asset. And this is an additive animation. We convert it to additive, so it'll play on top of an idle or a run. And right now, it's using mesh space additive. We're going to go ahead and just change that to local space additive. And that's it. And that will fix the jump. So let's, let's play this again. And you, you guys might not have seen how the jump was broken, but it's, right now he's, it now he's leaning forward into the jump. It looks more natural when he's landing. Yeah. Uh, so then let's go ahead and fix the same offset issue. Again, this is an aim offset that works with our Paragon system, but we can quickly convert it to work with this third-person demo. So I'm going to go into the aim offsets directory, and we have the crunch aim offset. So right now, it, right now he can turn his head. Let me zoom in a little so you guys can see. Right now we have a blend space where he can pretty much try to look all the way behind him over his shoulder. Since he's running towards the camera now when you run backwards, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of these. And let's replace it with the center aim offset center center. I'm going to drag and drop center down. And then we'll drag and drop center up. And we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and do this on the other side on his looking behind him on his other shoulder. <laughs> So let's go, we'll do center down here and center up. And I'll show you guys in just a second why you want to do this. All right, so let's save. Let's hit play again. All right, so earlier when I was running towards the camera and moving my mouse, the, the aim offset was really causing him to jitter out. But now he's using basically just his same center up and down aim offset. And so it's more it's natural that. when he leans when the turn? It's more natural, but uh, you actually just get rid of this pop where he's trying to blend between negative 180 and positive 180 on the blend space. And then one more thing. Right now he is missing his punch animations. This part is a little more in depth, but let's get into it. So his, we, we use a concept called, mon I'll go into this later, but we use montages for any times we do an ability like a punch or a melee move or even a firing a weapon move. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here and most of our primary, like left mouse button, we've named them primary. And sometimes we don't. So here it looks like we didn't. So I'll look up melee and let's look up one more. Ability combo. Okay, so each of these heroes had kind of different names for their abilities, and I would just say go through and just find the ones you want. 
So I'm just so here this is called ability combo. So here we have ability combo one. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that into a montage. So I'm gonna go up to the top, create animation montage. I'll go ahead and leave the name the way it is. And let's find ability combo number two. Here it is. Oh man, I'm so glad I can see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Create. I can't see you. <laughs> and then we have ability combo number three over here. Let's turn that into a montage. And these are the things we need for our combo system to work. Okay. Uh, the thing about montages is they're essentially scripted events that can be controlled outside of an animation blueprint. This is why a lot of uh, designers like using them. So here I've opened up the animation montage. This is going to be a very simple animation montage. I'm only going to have one animation in it. The thing you need to do is change the slot name to default group. Let's see, let's go down default group, upper body. And if your character goes into a pose like this, that's just a quirk going on right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, save this montage. And actually while I'm here, we're going to add a couple notifies for the, the combo system. So let's see. Okay, so we're going to create new, brand new notifies for him. So I'm going to go down to here, click, uh, right click on the notify strip here, and you're going to add, add notify, go to the bottom, do no, uh, new notify. Now let's do that again because I lost the box. Let's see, notify. I'm going to call this one reset combo. And I'm going to make another anim notify, brand new one. And let's call this one reset attack. And I believe that's the right one. Uh, the intent of these, these notifies, this is for the blueprint. I'll go into this more in depth in just a second. But this, the basics of what it does is, in the game, you could spam your left mouse button you know, countless times, but we don't want the animation to reset over and over and over every time you do it. So this basically tells you when will the animation reset again when you're clicking. Uh, so reset attack. Actually, I think I misnamed that one. This one should be called save attack. Let's add that one. Okay, so basically, we, this is where you're going to set it to where you, you, know, you don't want the player to interrupt the move before this part happens. So let's go ahead and let him punch and settle on that punch frame a little bit. I'm going to move that save attack notify there. Since this is a combo, you know, like all fighting game combos, they can time out if you don't press the button soon enough. So this is where I will let the user, I'll give them time before they can hit the button again. Um, before the, the combo times out. So this is essentially the, com the timeout setting. I'm going to put that at the very end of the animation. And let's go ahead and save that. So real fast, I just want to do a double check here. This is, uh, it's always good to double check any naming conventions you have before you start doing a lot of other naming. So I'm going to look at Shinbi's Montage, I just want to make sure I'm naming these notifies the correct, correct way. Okay. So yeah, save attack, reset combo. That's what I typed, right? Yes. We're good. All right, <laughs> we're good, we're good. And that's all happening within, for, for Crunch, it was all happening in under a second. Yes, right? yeah. His combo was uh, pretty fast. So let's go back to Crunch. And let's, what's cool is you only have, uh, the good thing is you only need to create those notifies once. Once you create them, it's going to add it to the skeletal um, asset, the skeleton asset, and then it's always there for your later ones. So let me open up a new montage, and this time all I have to do is right click, and let's get him paused. So now all I need to do is go to my frame, I can right click, and I want add notify, and I want it to be the save attack. Actually, I'm going to move that back a little bit because you do want him to kind of hang on that pose for a little bit. 
And then let's go ahead and add the notify reset combo. There we go. Uh, remember, also, you want to put the right slots on these. So this is going to be default group upper body. I'll explain the slots in a little bit. And then let's go to this third combo. He's doing this little upper uppercut here. So same concept. We're just going to wait for him to do his move. Let's settle on it for a little bit so the player can tell what happened. And let's add, go to the notify. Let's add notify and save attack. And then let's reset combo. And this is good enough for now. I'm, uh, again, I'm not going to forget to set a slot. <laughs> Sometimes when you're working with montages, this happens with animators all the time, our stuff just isn't working. Uh, it turns out we just left a slot name off the montage. So just, you always got to get in the habit of checking these things. All right, I'm going to save. Okay, so let's cross our fingers again. And let's hit play. Let's zoom out. And he should, and he should be hitting, and he's not, oh, yep, I missed a spot. So there we go. Fun about this is the trial and error. Real time, right. real time the, QA. The, this is real time game development, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you got, you, people may think we do this, like we try once and we get it working. No, it, we usually try 50 times before it works. Okay, so what I forgot to do is on Crunch's player character blueprint is where we have the combo set up. And like I said, montages can be controlled outside of an animation blueprint. So in this case, the character's non-animation, his blueprint, is controlling these montages with our combo system. So what I want to do here is I need to plug in his actual montages. So let's go back to his animations. And we have montage one. Let's plug that in here. Montage number two, we'll plug that into a second combo. And then let's plug in his third. I'm trying to keep this all in one window for you guys. And let's hit save. Let's go ahead and hit compile. I'm pretty sure it's compiled and we'll hit save. And let's play again. All right, so here he is, he's punching. And he's doing his three, three punch combo. So if he's standing still, you can see he does full body. And if he's running, right now we have it set up to, to do upper body. It's a pretty simple upper body blend per bone blend. But that's you get you get the visual feedback of the actual you, you get the visual feedback. So this is this is very typical. A lot of games kind of do a cheap version of upper body. We have a we have a pretty cool upper body system in our Paragon um, tool set that's coming down the line. But I, in a future one of these, I do want to show kind of what we call a, a poor man's version of setting up uh, what we call melee twist. But it gets rid of that, that extreme amount of twist that happens right at spine one, uh, especially when you're running. You get, you get a very strong disconnect between the hip motion and what's happening it on the upper like body. It feels like somebody might break their back a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah, and right now, by default, you are going to see this on some characters. Uh, one of my next streams, I'll cover how to fix this. But this is one of the, you know, designers love the freedom of a character running around and punching uh, with the freedom to move. Uh, animators, we really <laughs> despise this setup when, when it's asked for. But we, we found a way that kind of allows for both. And like I said, I'll cover that in a future one. So, All right, so let's get out of here. So what I did here is I basically copied all the Shinbi stuff over to Crunch, and he's now working exactly like Shinbi is working. So if that's all you want out of animation, you're, you just want your character to move and not understand much of it, that's, that's a part. I'm gonna show you one more part of this before I get in more in depth. Uh, so let's go back to Crunch. So right now, he, the camera's pretty close to Crunch. Let's open up his character blueprint. The character blueprint has the camera in it, the camera boom. So let's go to the viewport. And you can actually see where his camera is attached to his capsule. So let's just take his camera boom, and let's just move it out a little more. So let's do that. All 
So now he's not so so big on screen. Uh, you could just adjust that camera and just get it to where you, where you want. You could change the height and the the distance back. So this goes to the the question about translating this to a top down. Yeah. You could just move the camera above him and. Yeah, exactly. Your animations would still look the same. It would just be from a different perspective. And in this case, I actually moved the pivot of where the camera's looking. So when he runs at you, it's actually really off. So that's <laughs> that's, that's not a good thing. So you could see here where I moved the boom, but I moved. Essentially, I just moved the pivot of where that is. What you want to do is move this guy. So there we go. Oh, so you adjusted the camera back. Yeah, I adjusted the. the it's not the boom. It's the follow camera that uh, you want to move. So let's see. So now when he turns, it should. So when he turns, should uh, it shouldn't get so crazy. Yeah. Let's let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah, and now it's not so crazy. In your, he's not so in your face when he runs at you. I don't know that I'd be happy about him being in my face. <laughs> Especially punching. Especially with the, that, the, yeah, that uppercut, I think, at the end is just... So, so um, like I said, that's my simple copy over. You're done. Now you have another character moving. But now I want to get into the nuts and bolts of our animation system. I might not be able to cover everything today, but I'm going to try... And like I said, this is introductory concepts, but I assume there's some people who just want to get started. They may not know much about Paragon. I'd rather start with this and then walk everyone up to the more complicated parts later. So let's open up Crunch's animation assets. And as a very basic introduction, when you make an animation in Maya and export that animation, it's going to come into, it's going to come into the Unreal Engine as an animation asset. So let's open up one of these animations. So obviously this is your timeline. So this animation was 20 frames long. Uh, it's 30 frames a second. And this is pretty basic. It's all I'm really going to cover with the animation asset. Let's close that out. I went, I went into the animation montage a little bit. Um, I'm going to explain that just a little bit more. So a montage is like a container for your animation, and it has a lot more data you could put in it. Uh, it's where you can put your notifies. You could set your blend in and out values over here. So by default, we have this set pretty, of what, as an animator, I think a 0.25 blend time is pretty long. It can get pretty mushy. Uh, you know, but you can change it. You can change it to 0.1. Um, you change it to whatever your blend, blend needs to be. The really cool thing about this is, let me see if I can get this, this playing. I've, I've seen animators not use this, uh, but for those of you that ha might want to see it, let's see. You can edit a montage while you're, while you're playing. So if I'm trying to get the feel of this, this melee system working really well and I want that blend to be punchy, I can just go over here and keep messing with, with the blend in time. So let's say zero one, and the same thing with these notifies that I added for you know when I want my combo to reset or the save attack. Maybe one of the attacks, the rhythm of it doesn't feel right. I could just slide this around and just keep just keep trying it out. So this is definitely one of the an iteration speed thing that a lot of people don't know about. All right, so let's go ahead and save this montage. And now this is the big thing. This is the animation blueprint. So this is where all the logic is uh, to move our character around. And I'm going to back up a second. I'm going to move this off screen. Let's load up Crunch's blueprint. I want to explain to those that are new to this exactly what's happening in, in a game. So right now you're actually moving around a pawn. And what the analogy I like to make is you're actually moving at around a birdcage and the character is just riding along in that birdcage and all the animations that character is doing is like a mime trying to make you believe the character is actually animating and not the birdcage, if that makes sense. So let me show you an actual birdcage. So I'm going to go ahead and let's remove crunch from this blueprint. And Play the level again. 
So we still have a character that we're playing here. There's just not a skeletal mesh applied to it. And this has all the in-game physics. It turns when I move my mouse. It jumps when I jump. And behind the scenes, this is what we have. Uh, let's see, show. Hopefully this can come through on, this, on the stream. But you can see there's like a capsule here. Is this coming through on the stream? Yeah. Do you know? All right. I, I mean, it, it, in some points when you're looking <laughs> down a little bit. All right. That's so basically, your bird cage. this is your birdcage. And it's moving around. If I jump, the birdcage jumps up. And so as animators, we're trying to get rid of this, this. We're trying to create an illusion that there's actually a character that's pushing off the ground and their feet are contacted to the ground. But behind the scenes, this is, this is pretty simple stuff. It turns with your mouse. It jumps. Um, now, if we add a character to that, so let's go back and add Crunch again. And let's add him without his blueprint, his animation blueprint. So if I add Crunch here, OK. And let's play again. All right, hold on, let me stop this. It went ahead and knew I wanted his animation blueprint, so it loaded that. Let's go ahead and delete. Animation blueprint. None. File. Let's play again. Okay, and now you know we have an attached skeletal mesh. So the reason I'm telling you this is an animation blueprint works by taking all the information from this this bird the the capsule moving around. We're taking information from that and we're using that to inform what's going to happen in the animation blueprint. So your birdcage is still there. It's just replaced our, our, visually. Our birdcage is actually still there, and you can show it. So if I do show collision, it's in there. It's, it's tinier than he is, but it's still all there, and he's actually just attached. He's, he's right, attached so to the birdcage. Right, so you're just moving the birdcage around ultimately. With. Uh, and so what we want now is that bird, if that birdcage goes 300 units forward, we want a run cycle to play that looks like he's running at 300 units forward. So let's start there. We'll start with a run blend space. And let me get back to his character. Let's go ahead and plug in his, his uh, animation blueprint again. And, and blueprint. And let's save this so when we come back he, he will work. All right, so let's get back to the animation blueprint. Let's open this up. And for any of you animators out there, sometimes when you look at these graphs with all this, all, with all these points, especially if you like look at something like an event graph, it looks super intimidating. It looks like an animator should not understand this or be expected to. But really, I, you know, I'd say ignore it all and just focus on one thing at a time because these things build up in complexity over time. You just don't build this stuff in the first 30 minutes. You, you start it one at a time. So, for instance. This is the event graph, and I'm going to pop up a node that says, once you begin playing the game, I'm going to play a level start montage. And it's as simple as that. And all these make sense when you just kind of break it down into very simple units. And that's all this is, is just a bunch of different moments where the animator had to set up some, some logic. Uh, so let's get to the animation graph. And I'm going to, I'm going to disassemble this a little bit. The, the main thing in an uh, animation blueprint is that you have this final animation pose. And everything feeds into that. This is going to be the ultimate display of whatever animation you have. So let's say I'm just going to, if I plug in, let me find an idle. Here's an idle combat. And all I'm going to do is plug in this idle combat into the final animation pose. And now when I play the game, all he is going to do is play the idol. That's it. Even if I run, even if I jump, because the only thing I have feeding into that end pose is the, is the idol. And so to start off, let's go ahead and move this guy up to my runs. In fact, I only have one run because he only runs forward. And let's go ahead and just plug this in. End result. Okay, so right here is what we call a state machine. And a state machine is a series of rules that will play different animations. 
So when we first play an animation blueprint, it's going to start off right in the idle. And that's his idle combat. And the way you set these up, you can just drag and drop an animation into it and then plug it into that final animation pose. It's as simple as that. For things like idles, you want to make sure you have like loop turned on. And other animations that you don't want to loop, you want to make sure you turn that off. And here we have a jog start animation. So that's his first step from the idle stage. Yeah, and this is, this is a transition. You can see him. Let me scale this up a little bit. And many questions are great. Uh, let's zoom in a little more. All right, so yeah, here we just have an idle transitioning into a run. And so let's go back to the blueprint. So here, idle, and then we're playing that jog start. And right here, we have basically just a rule set that says, is his speed greater than zero? And is he not in the air? And is he accelerating? And if all those are true, then it will go on to the next step. Otherwise, it will never get there. So jog start is going to play. The only rule we have for that is this automatic rule based on sequencer play and state. So I'm going to pull that out so you guys can read the whole thing. Automatic rule based on sequence player in state. That essentially just means let this animation play. Once this animation is done playing, you can move on to the next, next one. This is where we could put a blend value. So under blend settings, I have a duration of 0.8. That was just to smooth out any of the steps. Then, of course, we have his run, which is um, Normally, I could just put in a run animation right here, but in this case, I used well, what's called one of our, uh, blend space. And this is how we're getting our leans right now. So let me turn him this way. So basically, based on his angle uh, that you're turning the mouse, that will kick up how much he's going to lean either way. Um, a lot of times, you can use blend spaces for the run. So you like up, uphill, downhill, you could have like a slow run, fast run, walk, idle. You could basically put a lot of different blends into this. Um, but just for our particular setup and just to get it to work with our future um, Paragon animation nodes, we're keeping this uh, blend space here. And let's see. And so right now I have just his blend space feeding into the, into the game. And so you can see his start and stop is being triggered. His leans are working, but you know he's now he's not jumping because I have not hooked up the jump logic yet. Uh, he's not punching. And this is you, typically how we build these up. We usually start off with maybe just the idle. Just get the idle working in the animation blueprint, then just get the run working. And we start building on top of that. And let's see. And right here, uh, you guys don't know what this is. This is a cache pose. So a cache pose is good to use. I mean, I could just take this, and I could feed it into my next node. But what you want is this kind of lets you know visually, just like everything going on here is going to spit out in this cache pose. And you can call that cache pose at any point you want. So, say down here, I believe I have a, okay, so right here I, I set up a cache called ground underscore loco, ground locomotion, and then when I get to this state, I can just load up a, a cache pose instead of like hooking all these, these nodes up. It's a clean way to do it. It's just a, a way to continuously draw from a pose that you have cached. Might not have explained that purely enough, but definitely try messing around with these. These are these are great. It lets you pull it into the next blueprint, so you don't have to recreate it each time. Exactly. Well, yeah, it just cuts down on the spaghetti. Um, it lets you kind of have a good con. It lets you break out what your animations are doing. You have a good concept of like, hey, my ground locomotion. That's all I care about here. Ground. Mm -hmm. That that's my end pose for that. So here we have locomotion and aim offsets. So then let's go ahead and pull off this. I'm going to go over what we have set up here. So 
Let's go ahead and do aim offset first. I touched on this a little bit when we were fixing it up. So we have a lot of animation assets here that you see idle, AO, RB, CC, CD. So basically CC means center, center. Uh, CU would be like center up. LC would be left center. And basically you just drop these in. Over here on, let me drag this over. On your aim offset, you want it to define your limits of your aim. So in this case, we wanted him to look all the way around him to negative 180 and positive 180. And then we want him on the vertical axis to look up 90 degrees and down 90 degrees. And that's where you, just, you can drag and drop your aim offset positions. So if I, let's just take aim offset CC. I'm going to drop it here in the center. CD, I would drop it down here and see you up here. And then at this point, you can hold down shift to, to move your, basically the blend around just to preview what it looks like. This is just for previewing. You're not going to mess up any animation. And so you can see your, oh, cool. your, your character looking around. Um, what feeds this is we're drawing Basically, we're getting a delta between where your reticle is aiming and where, where your character is aiming. And that value feeds into the blend space. And so you can see here we have yaw and pitch feeding in. So let me use this as a moment to get to the event graph. So, you know, I'm using pitch to, to um, control the aim offset. So let's go ahead and find references to this and see where we set it. And we'll just kind of walk backwards through the logic. Again, what I would do, the best way to learn this kind of stuff is usually to backwards engineer. Uh, if you're an animator, just kind of look what we've done, what others have done. There's a ton of you know, videos out there of people doing it. But basically, we got the base aim rotation from our character, and we got the actor rotation. We got the delta value. So the delta is just the difference between the two numbers. And then we broke that rotator out into roll, pitch, and yaw. And so pitch becomes the pitch, yaw is yaw, and then uh, we set the roll. And then this is like the pitch can define the pitch in your aim offset, and that's always giving you the difference between what your character is doing and what your mouse reticle is doing. And this is how we control leans, this, way, this is how we control aim offsets, and if you're doing like a strafe run, that's how we would control that as well. A lot of people were really curious in the, the leans. In the leans? Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's get to the leans since we're here. Let's lean into that. Let's lean Sorry. into the leans. Because I actually I skipped over the leans. Um, let's get back to the animation graph. And like I said, uh, the, re the leans we had put here in the uh, blend space for the jog. There are lots of ways to do leans. In this case, we actually motion captured someone running in a circle, or we use that as reference. But you can seriously just have a, an animation offset that leans the character side to side. Uh, we are controlling the uh, horizontal axis with a lean angle. So let's go ahead and go to the event graph. I'll show you how we set up the lean angle. Because all, all I'm doing is I'm getting a lean angle value and feeding it into a blend space. Simple as that. So let's get to the uh, event graph. And if you're ever curious as to how things are set up, you can go over here to the variables. And let's do, uh, I believe I had yaw delta. So real fast, let me, let me go back to the, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right variable. So let's go back to the locomotion. On leans. Okay, I'm using yaw delta to drive the lean angle. So yeah, let's go to the yaw delta. And I'm going to look for the part where I set the yaw delta. Okay, so this is a little more complicated. Again, what I would recommend is you can look at Shinbi's setup and kind of backwards engineer it. But what I'm doing is I'm getting the pawn owner, which is uh, the, the pawn. And I'm getting the actor rotation. 
And then I am setting a rotation last tick, which is basically I'm comparing where the rotation was, the tick before the last. So I'm kind of getting a, a difference between over time where the, the rotation was to where the next tick is, if that makes sense. And that gives me a delta between the two. So for instance, let's say I'm turning the mouse pretty, pretty hard and over one tick it's giving me a value of like say 10 degrees difference. I'm using that 10 degrees to then drive the lean. So I'm feeding that into a yaw. Um, that doing it last tick can give you a real jittery motion because based on your mouse and your feedback, you're then feeding that blend space re uh, really harshly with a bunch of values. And so what I did is I put in an F interp, which allows, it kind of smooths out the, the interpolation. And I gave it an interp speed. And so let's see. So basically, it's that. I'm essentially just testing the rotation last tick and getting a delta using an F terp to smoothly blend that out. I would recommend go ahead and try this without an F interp to see you know, what's happening. And then the lean intensity scaling, that was just for whatever reason. Sometimes if you do the mouse, you might uh, jolt them too hard. Like you might see that Shinbi jolts too far to the left or right when you barely move the mouse. And this is just dividing a value so you can kind of smooth that out. And these are all numbers you can just adjust, like the seven, per, uh, seven uh, divide by seven on the lean intensity scaling, the interp speed, you can mess with that value. But at the end of all this logic, you're setting your yaw delta. And then that yaw delta is that final number between the two ticks, and that feeds your leans. And I hope that made sense, but like I said, it, it's good to backwards engineer this stuff and just tinker, like unhook stuff and hook it back and see what's happening. Change numbers and... Change numbers and a lot of rotation things. Like, there, there's a lot of math and you don't have to be really good at math at all. But uh, especially when it comes to rotations, you're, you're going to use this delta rotator a lot just to kind of get values and um, you can see it set pitch and yaw, you're, you're always going to be comparing two, two numbers, especially between the pawn and the, the camera angle. That's awesome. Right. I mean, it's, so. yeah, I think when you first see it, it's like, this is, this is a lot, but I think when you break it down into the, to the finer bits, it gives you the ability to, it, yeah, to yeah. really kind of. And one other note, this is just kind of housekeeping stuff, but you can forget what you did when it comes to these blueprints. Two weeks goes by, you could absolutely forget what you had set up. And so always just comment your stuff. Even if it's just a comment to yourself, just always group it and comment what you're doing. And that helps too. I know programmers know this stuff, but sometimes we animators just want to get to the final result. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so let's go, let's see what I have time probably to do one more concept in here. Um, let's go back to the, the animation blueprint or the uh, anim graph. And let's go ahead and move to the next step. So I went over blend spaces. Blend spaces and leans actually work very in a very similar way. Let's do actually a blend per, let's do actually the montage. I covered montages, so I actually want to cover what montages do and how they interact with the animation blueprint. So in all the montages, I set it to an upper body slot under the default group. Basically what this means, if you think visually of this graph, just imagine someone is piping in that montage animation and this is the point in my graph where it's being inserted. Think of it this way. And if it's just a regular full body animation, it's not additive, this is going to trump everything behind it. It's going to totally stomp on anything um, past it. And then if it's additive, it'll apply additive to anything that's feeding into it. And it's a pretty simple concept. Just treat it like it's, you can essentially treat it like it's an animation asset. It's just being, it's pulling in animation from a montage. And then layer blend per bone is another concept we're using in Shinbi's uh, blueprint. So blend per bone we have, here we have the locomotion pose, like the running and jumping. 
the cash pose I talked about earlier. And here we have cash pose upper body, which we're setting that right after this upper body slot in the thing. In, in, um, after the slot, we're setting up a cash upper body. So what we want to do here is, let's say the montage is playing full body here. We're setting an upper body cash because what we want, we want that montage, like the upper body melee, to play on top of a run. So this is a layer blend per bone. The base pose is going to be my locomotion. That's my run, that's my jump, and then upper body is going to be my, the melee motion that goes on top. So when you're running the attack motion, or yeah. whatever you're doing is mm -hmm. translated. And so basically these are two animations, but how do they blend? That's actually controlled right here on the blend per bone. So this is a layer setup. And this is, um, it's a little bit different than how animators think of blending, but it's a, it's a really simple concept. So what I'm doing now, if you guys can see this, I'm basically going to start my blend at the pelvis and my blend depth is four. So what that means is I'm starting to play my animation on the pelvis, the, the melee, and it's gonna blend up to spine one, spine two, and spine three. By the time I get to spine three, it's going to be playing the full 100% blend of that melee motion. The hips are gonna play only 25% of that blend. You know, spine one will be 50. It, you know, each time you go up a bone, it's gonna go up Basically, it's going to normalize uh, uh, of 100. So if I do a blend depth of 2, it's going to put 50% on the pelvis, 50% on spine 1. Now, this is not intelligent. It doesn't know how a human body hierarchy is made. So it's also going to start blending down the legs. So here I went ahead and added thigh right, thigh left, and I put a negative 1. This basically tells the blend to don't, don't blend past this. So I'm only blending from pelvis all the way up to spine 3. So if you're using and, something with a different bone structure. Yeah, if you, you use, can, uh, yeah, for instance, if you have five uh, spine bones, you're going to want to set that deeper. Or if you want more control. So, for instance, remember when we played, when we played Crunch and you saw basically his hips doing nothing? Oh, let's do this. I need to hook up his animation blueprint. So let me, let me get this hooked up real fast. Well, shouldn't be when she's swinging. It's going to come from her hips, whereas a robot may just be the arms or it's the true. upper torso. Yeah. E each character is different, and this is actually something, as we're making these here, we are setting this bl this blend differently per, per character. Uh, so right here, let's go ahead and play them and see what we had by default. So a lot of people have been asking about, you know, like turns in place, you know, with 90 degrees left and right. So your body turns and then plays a lower body animation. Is this kind of the pretense to setting that system up? Yeah, that, that's going to be round two is turn in place. Uh, again, our turn in place system was part of Paragon's code, but like I said, there is a way to, a vanilla way to do it on mm -hmm. here, and I'll cover that on, on a part two. Okay, so here we go. You know, you can see his hips are barely, they're kind of moving when he swings, but not much at yeah. all. So if I go back to that blend per bone, Let's go ahead and set that up to, let's just do a blend depth of two. So what this means is his hips are going to take 50% of that blend and his spine one is going to take 50%. And this is going to go crazy. It'll be a much bigger uh, really. It, it, his hips are going to have a lot of that motion in it. And it's actually probably a little subtle for, for people to see. Uh, let's see. But you can see it his, seems a little his, bigger. His hips are definitely moving a lot more. Uh, let's just really go extreme to, to um, get this concept across. Let's do a blend depth of just one. And so ba essentially everything should be on his hips now. Swing with your hips. His hips and beyond. Oh wow. So his hips are moving just like they were, they were animated. But as you can see it doesn't work well with the legs, you know, which have none of that animation with it. Um, so like I said, what usually what we, we do is when we're setting this up, we actually just kind of go between three and four, depending on the character. And like I said, I'll cover in a, a, a next stream how to get what we call a melee twist put in. All right, and I think I am running out of time, but let's do um, how we control the logic of upper and lower body. 
so let's see. So on that blend, uh, blend posed by bull. So basically, this is saying that I'm going to play either two animations, two different animation options based on what kind of things are happening. So if this character is accelerating, that's the active value, which means it's true. So if he's accelerating, that means he is moving. I want to play upper body. So I'm going to go ahead and play this, the end result of this blend per bone, which has upper and lower body happening on it. Now, if he's standing still, I want to play full body, which means this active value is false. So I have a false pose. And that is going to be the cash pose before we did the blend per bone. It's just going to be, um, it's going to be full body, essentially, because it's going to be the full montage feeding into the end pose. So that's, that end pose, this is going to be the same. So this would be the same as me just feeding that into here. Um, And then that's my in full body pose. And then down here, we just have two bone leg IK on the legs. And we'll use that later for slope matching and stuff. But this is very simple. Uh, you have your leg definition. And you just essentially set up. Uh, this one node can be used for both legs. So basically, you just define your foot IK bone, what your FK bone is you want to follow, number of bones in your limb, and you're ready to go. Makes it easy if you have four legs. Yeah, if you have four legs, you can put it in here. You, it, this is a little bit of a misnomer. We call it leg IK because that's what it was used for in Paragon. But this is actually just, it's just a nice two-bone IK. Uh, you could put your arms in this definition. If you're IKing anything else, you can put it in one, one node. And I think we'll probably rename this node once we get all the Paragon stuff in. Awesome. So I'm going to leave it here. I know it was simple for some of you pros out there. We are definitely going to keep pushing on this. We'll add things like turn in place, uh, melee twist, um, some better like additive options. I didn't really go over additive animation that much. And we'll cover that in the future. Please give me your feedback because I would love to hear what you guys would like to see. And we'll take it from there. Um, all right. So we'll do some questions. All right. Let's do questions. Out. Awesome. Um, Obviously, if it's related to any of the items you just mentioned, yep. we'll, we'll bring Jay back for another stream where we can dive a little more in depth yes. into some of those talks. <laughs> I'm scared. Um, so let's see. Um, they're wondering if you could use these models with any third-person mannequin actions and other marketplace items. Yes, uh, I did not cover actual animation retargeting. We definitely have some videos and documentation mm -hmm. out there of how to retarget. You can retarget mannequin or anything you buy off the marketplace to any of these characters. Excellent. Um, and just for general practices, they were wondering, do we typically use an animation blueprint per ca character or sort of like one to them all? So for Paragon, that's a great question. And, and there's no right answer. It depends on how you want to categorize your assets, how many are sharing a skeleton, how much kind of babysitting you want to do of, of an animation blueprint. We chose to have a unique animation blueprint per hero because we were generally doing a new hero after the other one and we kind of didn't, we didn't want legacy issues with past heroes to keep building up on our animation blueprint. Um, but you absolutely can, you just need the characters to share a skeleton asset. And that does not mean they need to share the same skeleton. It does mean they need to share the same hierarchy, but they could have different proportions. Um, but yeah, it, it, either or. It, so. OK. Um, I don't feel like we saw a lot of it, but do we use a lot of curve animations Yes. or curve assets in these animations? We use, um, so our, <laughs> our, our, Paragon, our Paragon assets have a lot of curve data in the animations that we absolutely use for um, uh, distance matching and melee twist. Uh, since, let's see, since Crunch didn't have any like upper body spins, Shinbi does, and she actually has some curves that, let me load up real fast to show you um, what we're doing with her curves. It should just take a second. So if we load up Shin B, and let's look at her melee. So her melee has her spinning 
and jumping in the air. So we don't want upper body the whole time when even though she's running. So what we did is actually I did it in her animation asset. So right here on her curve graph, I have a full body. And basically, when I want her to play a full body animation, I take this curve value to 1. Mm -hmm. And that way, she will play full body. Even though I'm using the upper body only logic when she's moving, she'll go ahead and play full body here. So this is an instance where we are using curves here to control um, float values on the animation blueprint. And there was a there was a follow up to, you know, we created. Um, you were talking about creating like a single blueprint or anim mm -hmm. that you could share. How do you normally transfer that functionality between um, the different characters? So if you were to create a simple or it, a shared. So if animation. you were to create a shared animation blueprint, you all you have to do is plug it into their character. That if you have a shared animation blueprint, you just plug it into their specific character blueprint. So. Right now, you'll have Crunch's character blueprint feeding into his animation blueprint. Shinbi's character blueprint will feed into her animation blueprint. In this case, they can just share. You're just pointing to a different skeletal mesh. OK. Um, let's see. They were wondering if you could talk a bit about the naming and nomenclature that we use around animation setups. Yeah, I, you know, there's no right way to name <laughs> something. Uh, what I found when coming up with naming conventions is don't overdo it. You don't have to have every single description in the name because that gets confusing. Um, you want to keep it as simple as possible and sometimes you just divide that between the directories you're in. You know, sometimes the directories themselves can give your names uh, information, sometimes the name itself. What we decided on Paragon was to keep all names hero agnostic. So an idol is an idol and the, the hero's directory structure told you what hero it was, but the, the uh, name itself is the same. Uh, we kept it very basic, um, and it worked for us. Everyone got it. You know, our deaths were death underscore A, B, C, D. The only thing I think sometimes we went back and forth on was our ability system, because Let's say we had a Q ability mapped to the Q key. Sometimes designers would change the Q to like an E, and then that just kind of ruined our name. Um, <laughs> sometimes code names would change. And so that's kind of still, you'll see on here, that's sometimes a little bit all over the place, especially with like primary or melee or attacks. Everything else is generally pretty close. OK. So. Um, there's some questions about uh, distance man matching. Uh -huh. And how to actually play like four jog when running, and how where is that speed applied? And uh, so distance matching is. Let me find an animation with a start. So right now this animation blueprint has no it has no way to read these curves and do anything with it. We will do this in the future. So let's do a jog. Let's do a jog. We'll just load up a jog backwards stop. Um. The concept of this is, it's kind of like reverse root motion. So she's actually animating in place. But let's say in Maya, we had to offset her in Maya to keep her at 0, 0, 0. And that offset curve value is right here on the distance curve. So basically, we applied that curve as a custom attribute curve on here. And what happens is, we query where the capsule is in relation to when it, when it started moving. And let's say it's five units from where it started. We just look at the animation and we say, hey, we're going to play the frame where you're five units off. So the capsule, think of the capsule as a scrubber. It's going to, the capsule, depending on where it is, is scrubbing to the point in the animation you need to be. So it'll kind of speed up and slow down the animation. And this is what keeps the feet locked down. Um, that's the general concept of it, but like I said, that node won't be coming until later this year. Okay. Um, <laughs> would you be willing to talk about some of the few things that we're going to be seeing with the new like Paragon animation system that you mentioned with some of those changes? Um, 
Yeah, so if you guys haven't seen it, uh, we have an older video. I'll post on my Twitter account a link to it's uh, Laurent Delayen who set up all of these systems and Ray Arnett who, who was the first animator to um, plow the path through it. Um, they go through these concepts and show exactly what's happening. But basically what these things allow you to do is do start and stops that keep the feet locked on the ground. You can do turn pivots, turn in place. Um, it does a lot of hip fixing. But yeah, I highly recommend watching those videos and we, you'll see what kind of systems are on their way. Cool. Let's see. Sorry. Uh, could you briefly show how you solve the like start and stop animations? And like. Yeah. Um, so solve by how? Like with uh, solve by plugging them in. See. So said, I'm, will you show how you did this? How so you solve the start and stop? Most likely the movement wrapping part. The movement. So say it, repeat it again. You show how you solve. How did you solve the start and stop animations? Most likely the movement wrapping part. Sometimes a little oh, hard movement. out of context. Oh, movement, <laughs> uh, probably distant, distant matching. Yes, yeah, start and stops. With our new system that's coming, was controlled that way. This way that I'm doing now, um, I didn't cover this earlier. The, especially the jog stop. We have a, the, our old system, we have a lot of, kind of synced animations and we're we have a lot of like leeway when you stop so right now if you were to play this stop in the current project once you stopped you would actually see her taking several steps before she actually stops so right now what I did is I chose a part in the animation where her feet are generally getting close to stop so let's say it's right here and the current time is like 0.7 I think that says 0.75 so in the blueprint, what you can do is you can go to the start position and change the start position. So at least these, the, the current setup will blend right into it. But I think with the intent of their question was actually the start and stops being precise and perfect and matching the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is going to be our, our distance matching okay. tool set. Um, they're wondering if we could talk to or speak about any facial animation features in these assets. These assets, so these assets do not have yeah. uh, facial features. We have, um, I can get into that probably down the road. We do have tools for facial. The, the characters do have face bones in them. Mm -hmm. Sadly, we're not, I mean, we're not going to release the, the Maya rigs with the face because that's proprietary setup stuff we have. Gotcha. Um, but there are ways for people to get facial in, and that would be a good thing for me to cover. Is there's there's like a pose node we just added, where you can drive poses in a face. So think of it like the aim offset blend space. However, it's just a list of poses, and you could have a bunch of custom float curves that you export out of Maya that control those poses. Okay, so. great. Um, that's uh, there. Sort of an aside, but did Paragon use a single collision capsule or multiple collision volumes? We used a single collision capsule for Paragon because we didn't do any bone uh, data replication at all, just capsule. Oh, nice. Yeah. Makes it easier. Yep. Um, so those are the questions those that great questions. don't relate to <laughs> what we're going to cover in part two. Um, so, so yeah, I will, we'll, we'll work out exactly what we're going to cover in part two, but I, what I would like to cover is actually the, the strafe system first and probably turn in place. I would love to go over those. Yeah, that's a lot of questions around turn in place. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be a really great one. We have a couple of people asking when we'll be releasing more characters. We don't have a set date on that, but we're targeting um, summer for, I think, a few more. And then I think so. We are working on them now, but yeah. it's, it's going to take a little bit. Yeah, it takes a little time, but it takes a little time. Um, I'll give you a couple moments to and see then, if there's any last-minute questions. And then, can, can we say? I, I think I, I think we can say it. we are <laughs> going. Best part. I, I don't know. Can't <laughs> say what we're about to say. I'm deciding right now. We could say this. Um, <laughs> we we are going to release at least a Shinbi level of animation blueprint for the 20 heroes that are out now. <laughs> Those will be coming.
Don't know when, but we're working on them now, just so you guys can have those. All right. uh, where would you suggest, so somebody who never, never touched animation before, where would you suggest they start? So that's a great question. I get asked that question all the time. If, well, if you've never touched animation, I would say just start with just learning animation in Maya. Don't even worry about the, the Unreal Engine yet, just yet. But let's say you're an animator and you want to get into games and you're trying to figure it out. The tutorial that I give new animators when they start here is our third person tutorial and I believe Wes Bunn came up with a new newer version of it but if you're an animator and you've done that tutorial you are going to know all this stuff by the end of it and you'll be a, you'll you'll be set up for success so awesome yeah yeah there's a ton of resources available for really but, any discipline oh, that you're trying to get into yes there's a ton of resources and I actually want to thank Jackson at Titanic Games don't know if you're listening at all, but I definitely referenced you for the combo attacks. Um, so thank you. Um, like I said, there is a I ton of. Like you should be holding an award. I know here. Uh, there's a, there's there's a ton of stuff out there. Uh, there's a lot of times we go out and look at other people's videos of how they do something. Uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Everything I set up here is not the way to do it. Poor it's cat. a it's a way to do it. Yes, poor cat. Um, it's a way to do it, and programmers will always tell you the most optimized way to do it at the end. Um, yeah. <laughs> After you've done but, the work. Yes, but just, just tinker and have fun and try things. Do not, you're not going to break things too terribly. And you can always revert, right? You can always revert. Yeah. Well, that's why you use version control. That's right. Yeah. Always so. do. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we do oftentimes, if, you, if there are questions that we didn't address in the stream, please go ahead and toss them in the forums, and I'll... Big J and some yeah. of the others to <laughs> no, we, we jump want, in and answer some questions. We absolutely want you guys to have fun with this and learn. And so, yeah, we're here to help get this, this rolling with the, the Paragon assets. We're so happy you can play with them and see all the stuff we've done. And we want to see you guys do some really amazing stuff. Yeah, it's, so. I think it's really cool for the team to actually see. We mentioned that yeah. brawler earlier that I showed. And, um, yeah, that was really, yeah. everyone was like, oh, this yeah. is so awesome. It's the, really magical to sort of to see oh, it, it, it's, them out there. It's magical. Just know every Paragon developer, and probably non-Paragon developer at Epic, when we see this stuff, our hearts grow three times as big. We might shed tears. I mean, we are so happy about this stuff. So please <laughs> keep it coming. Yeah, it's really so. awesome. Uh, there is one question, and, and I don't know that we have that yet, uh, but we're, people are asking when, when is part two going to be for this uh, uh, the stream, and I think that's something we have to figure out the schedule for everybody's so, time. I'm going to Disney World next week, so I can't do it next week. So, so not. Um, well, let's do Disney that. We're going to Disney World next week, so... <laughs> uh, you know, my hope is, my hope is at the very least I'm doing this at least once a month starting off. But yeah, you want to come hang out with us? Yeah, tonight? these guys are awesome. <laughs> I love to. I mean, I just, um, we, have, we have no grounds for understanding if I'm awesome or not. <laughs> You're awesome, and thank you for coming You know, coming I'm just going to assume man. awesome at I first, that. and then we'll go from there. Well, um, I, it's only me that can take it down now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, I, as soon as possible, honestly. I just want to go through and give a good presentation of how to do it. So. Awesome. All yep. right. Thank awesome. you, thank you, thank you awesome. again. Awesome. All right. Um, Appreciate you hanging out. As always, yeah, if you absolutely. have feedback, feedback or certain topics you'd like to cover other than the part two, we know that one. <laughs> um, I've dropped a live stream survey into the chat. Please fill that out. It really makes us know what you want from us and how we can help you in your projects. Um, as always, check for your local UE4 meetup groups, meetup.com slash pro slash Unreal Engine. There's a lot of really great developers in your area, hopefully, that you can go hang out with. And if not, you can always start your own. Just let us know. And submit your projects to the NVIDIA Edge program. I love handing out uh, NVIDIA graphics cards to you all. So if you're making something rad, tag us uh, <laughs> on social, and we'll check out your products. So thanks again, and have a good week. Right, bye. Bye. I feel like...